I can't not ask this one, and uh, I can barely see his name. Dustin Clark has said a decent victory over Triple H, and I will uh, elaborate on that. I believe it was SmackDown 2000, Kai and Tai, and the Brooklyn Brawler in a three-on-one handicap match, July sixth, 2000. Right. Uh, like it's, you're like in a backstage capacity. You're almost right. semi-retired from the ring at this point. Uh, right. Although you were doing quite a lot of matches, so how does it feel when someone goes? Actually, you're in the main event, and actually, you're getting a pinfall victory over the champion. Well, this is how it came about. Mick Foley was the GM of the uh, of the show of the at that time for months and months, and he told Triple H he had a beef with Triple H, and he said, "You're going to start from the beginning, and you're going to earn your way up." He goes, and Triple H is, you know, cocky, you know, I'll do whatever you want. I don't care. I could beat anybody on the game and I could play the game and this and that and this and that. And uh, so Triple H comes out. Nobody has any idea what's going to happen. They play Kai and Ty's music. Kai and Ty comes out. They both come out. I mean, they're little guys. Triple H is laughing like cocky. With, he's got Stephanie in the ring and uh, he's laughing. He's laughing. And then the, the music hits again. Then I come out. Now it's a three on one, and the people he laughs even harder. Like this is a joke. This is a joke. I could beat anybody anytime. I'm the game. I'm the game. So what happened was he was working an angle with uh, Chris Jericho. Mm-hmm. So to build the angle with Chris Jericho, you'll get that later. But uh, he, we have a good match. He gives me. A, he gives me. I give him a neck breaker in the match. Did you ever see the match? Yeah, in fact, I watched it just before, just before we came on. Did you see it like he, he he gave them the pedigree? He let me give him a neck breaker. I I, I think I gave him a clothesline over the over the top row. I did a few things too. He gave me a lot of offense. So he gives the pedigree to both Kai and Ty. It's just me and him. I'm, I chop him a few times. Come to the ring. He kicks me in the stomach. Goes to give me the pedigree. Chris Jericho hits the ring. Gives him a bulldog, which he took mighty kind of sloppy. It wasn't a good bulldog. And uh, I pinned him and. On the commentations, Michael Hay- Michael Cole goes, and the Brooklyn Brawler just beat Triple H. I can't believe I'm saying this on SmackDown. The Brooklyn Brawler beat Triple H. Then they shoot to the screen, the Titantron, and they show Chris Jericho at the limo of Triple H, saying to the limo driver, uh, Triple H told me to take your limo tonight, and uh, he had a really bad night. He just got beat by the Brooklyn Brawler, and he gets in Triple H's limo, and Triple H is watching this on the Tron. He's going crazy. And then... Uh, he drives out of the building with the limo and Triple H looks at me and he beats the shit out of me. He starts punching me. You know, you know, he try, gets gets revenge on me. And then and when I come back to the dressing room, he says, says to me, yeah, but you needed Triple H to beat me. I says, yeah, you just need a sledgehammer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like in other words, it's all fake. <laughs> it's a movie. It's a movie. And we told you, sports entertainment, we're entertaining you. The guys that I beat, a lot of them I could beat up in in the dressing room. So I deserve an Oscar. <laughs> I deserve an Oscar because I convinced you that I was getting beat up and making this guy look fantastic, and you believe it. So give me an Oscar. That's what they should have. They should have the Hall of Fame, they should have the Slammies, and they should have the Oscars. That you know what I mean? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Was was Triple H always business in these kind of situations? He was business then because nobody would ever believe in a million years he'd let the Brooklyn Brawler beat him. Mm. You know what I mean? So he was business there, but uh, I mean, it, it worked for him. You know what I mean? Vice president of the company. He's married to the boss's daughter. He's got three daughters. He's a uh, I don't have no bad words to say about anybody. Mm. You know what I mean? I just, I, I'm just telling the truth. I, I sort of wondered if it's, uh, you know, would he have done the same for Taka or you know Taka Mishinoku, or was it just because I'll definitely do it for the Brooklyn Brawler? You, you know, you had that sort of cachet, that respect. Life works that way. The underdog always means more than anybody else. Mm. That's why the Rocky movie, he was the underdog. And like Mr. T or whatever, whoever the champion was, he was the champion. He he wants a number one contender, but they choose Rocky, who's just a preliminary boxer. He's the underdog. Is more excitement in the underdog winning? Did you ever see Cinderella, man? No, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see how you see how he got hurt, and he was a big champ. Then he became an underdog, and he couldn't beat nobody. Couldn't beat nobody. 
So him winning meant more than a top guy beating a top guy. A bottom guy beating a top guy is news.